Well everyone, the Samsung Galaxy S23 has officially came out, so let's go and take a look at it and see how exactly to use this specific device. Now I'll definitely tell you, this is a very good device, I'm very glad you picked it up, and it's a great choice, it's going to last you a very long time, and you know, this is probably going to be one of the best Android phones you can buy in 2023. Now starting off with the outside of the specific device, you can see we have a pretty basic design. So I'm going to go ahead and break down the design first. So on the front, we have a really good display. It's a whole bunch display. The front camera is right there. And there's no buttons or anything on the front. So it's literally just touchscreen. Hopefully you all know that by now. On the left side, there isn't anything. So there's nothing on the left side that you need to worry about. On the top, there's nothing except for this hole right there, which we'll talk about in a second. On the left side of this device, we do have the button placement. So we have the power button right here. And we have the volume up and down button on the right side as well. Now this is just an antenna band basically, but that is it on the outside. There's really not a whole lot else to kind of think about, except for the bottom of this phone. So this is where things start getting a little bit more interesting. So on the bottom, we have a few things that you should probably keep note of. So for one, we have our charging port. This is our USB-C charger. You can always go ahead and wirelessly charge your device too. You have speaker grill on the left side. And on the right side, you actually have your SIM card eject little area. So what you can do here, if you want to go ahead and remove your SIM card, you have to have some sort of SIM card eject tool. So they give you one in the box, it pretty much looks like this, it's like a little needle thing that basically sticks out. You can use a needle, you can use something, anything that'll fit into this small hole on the right side. So please do not put it in the hole that's closest to the USB-C charger, put it to the hole that is the furthest one away. What you want to do, put that little SIM card eject tool right in there, and what you can do is go and output that SIM card, and you can go ahead and place your SIM card inside of this specific tool. So go ahead and put your nano SIM card inside of this, and that is pretty much all you're going to have to do. So once you're ready, all you want to do is go place it back just like so, and you are pretty much good to go. Once it's popped in, your SIM card will then be you know, detected if it's suitable, and that's it. Now in the back of your device, you have your wireless charging area right here. We have our flash up here. You have reverse wireless charging on this phone too. On my model, I do have the IMEI number on this specific device, which is interesting. I was not expecting that. But you also have your triple camera setup up here as well. Now, those are pretty much the main things on the outside of this device. Those are some of the features on this device as well. But now to go ahead and go boot up this phone, I've already went through the initial setup because it's kind of boring. Hopefully you all kind of know that. It's just a bunch of personal information, your you know Gmail account, password, all that stuff. So once you go and go through that, you'll basically have this specific phone. Now there's a few ways you can turn on the display. You can click the power button, that is the lowest button on the right side, or what you can do is you can go ahead and double tap the display. Now I actually prefer double tapping the display. You can also double tap to turn it off as well. So you can look at that, you can just double tap it wherever you want to. So whenever you have the lock screen and whenever you power on your phone for the first time most of the time, it will come into the lock screen. At the very top, it'll usually stay consistent. So you have your SIM card provider here, so if it's Verizon or T-Mobile, it'll be right up here. You have the whole bunch of display here that's a little bit more visible when the display is on. And you have your time, you have your you know, battery settings up here as well on the right, you know, right side of the corner. Or if you're on the lock screen, your time will be in the center. So now what you can do is you can see the time right here. And if you want to see notifications or something, what you can do is go and tap on these notifications right there. And you will have a list of notifications that are basically waiting for you. So that is something that I always like seeing. You can tap on the display notifications like this to see them. Or you can just hop out of them like this and basically see them that way as well. Now at the very bottom, you will see two little icons, a phone icon here and a camera icon here. Now with the One UI 5, you have the ability of changing these, so we'll talk about that in a second. But whenever you're ready, you can swipe up, and now you're in your home screen. So the home screen is pretty much consistent with any other Android phone, so as long as you've used Android before, you basically know how to do it. But if not, you have your main display here. What you can do is you can swipe between displays if you have any other displays open, if you have any other app icons there. You can always go ahead and basically remove widgets or remove app icons by holding them down like this. And you can go ahead and remove them. You can also keep them if you want to. You can go and hold down app icons like this. If you want to remove an application, you can remove them here. If you want to select it, if you want to multi-move apps, you can go and select them there. You can also update the apps and even get into their app icon or app information by clicking on that app icon there, which is really, really cool. Now the bottom dock will pretty much always stay consistent. So you can add app icons here. You can do that by holding down on an icon and you can move it over. So if you want to move it to another page, you can slide it over to another page and drop it here. Or if you want, you can go and drag an icon here and bring it down to your dock. Now for this time being, I'll just keep it up here for the time being. But like you can see, you can swipe between different pages just like this, which is really cool. Now if you want to get into your notification bar, 
we'll start up at the top. So what we want to do is we can swipe down from the top and just like the notifications that we saw on the last page, you will also see these notifications right here. So what you can do is you can tap on a notification and you'll basically see more notifications within that specific you know, app. So if you want to go and click here, you'll come into here. So that's basically it. If you swipe down once more, you go and actually swipe down one more time. So if you swipe down once more, you'll basically be able to see the little Wi-Fi widgets up here. So these are your quick toggles. If you want to turn off your Wi-Fi, turn off sound, you can turn on or off Bluetooth, your you know rotation icon too. You have a lot of things you can go and kind of modify here, which is really cool. So you can go and toggle them on or off from here. You can also quickly get into your settings by clicking on the top left corner, and you can see your data up here. But if you swipe down one more time, you will come into this panel. So these are basically all of your toggles that you can go and kind of modify. So you have your time here. It looks kind of like your lock screen, but not really. You have the search icon. You can power down your phone by clicking on that button. You can click and get into settings here. And here are just more options that you have right there, which we won't really get into right now. Now here are basically those same exact toggles that we talked about before, but they are basically just, you know, there's way more options here. So you can swipe through. You can kind of find out whichever other app icons you want to go and kind of take a look at. If you want to go into another page, you can add more app icons by clicking the plus icon, and you can drag them from here and bring it to the bottom. So that is all you need to know about here. I'd recommend going through and kind of seeing each one of these, seeing which ones you like, seeing which ones you don't like, and pretty much going on from there. There's a lot of information here. So kind of take it, mind it, kind of mess with it whenever you can. At the very bottom, you'll basically get into this brightness toggle. So what you can do is you can increase or decrease the brightness depending on what you want to do by sliding it just like this. But this video, I'll just keep it right here because it looks pretty good. But you can also tap on those three dots here and you'll see adaptive brightness and extra brightness. I typically like keeping adaptive brightness off, but you can also turn on extra brightness if you really want to. So that's another cool thing that you have the ability of kind of checking out here as well. So swiping out of here, what we can do is go and click done. And what we can do here is we can go and swipe back up, swipe back up, and we should either be in the settings panel or be on our home icon. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we get home? So these buttons down here are our navbar buttons, but you can always use gesture-based design if you want to. So what I do is you can go and click the home button here to basically go home. You can click in the three lines here to get into your recents panel. If you want to go back, you can go and click the back button right there. So that is it. That's how you use these buttons. Now with the gesture design, it's a little bit different, but it's kind of the same thing. But we'll talk about that in a second as well. Now, if you want to get into your, all your apps that you have on your phone, you can swipe up and you'll basically be able to get into all of your app icons. I'll do it again. Basically, you just drag up just like this, and then you'll see all of your app icons. So these are all the apps that you have on your phone. So you can go ahead and find whichever app you want to kind of mess around with, and you'll basically see that. So if you want to go and search for an application, you can always search for it up here, and you'll be able to find the application this way. So that is another really cool thing that you have the ability of doing here. Like I said, basically every phone nowadays has this type of application or this type of ability. So you're not really missing out on it too much. But that's another cool thing you can do is search for any app that you really want to. Now, if you want to, you can go and now swipe between apps. But like I said, if you want to, you can click home and you can always go back home. The home button is always there for you. Getting back into our recents panel real quick, you can see that there's a couple of things here. Our most recent apps are down here. Our application that we have been using are here. You can swipe out of them if you want to. But you can also go ahead and if we load up an application here, you can also go ahead and close out of all your applications here as well, which is really cool. So another way to go ahead and kind of take the, you know, the accessibility and, you know, capability behind this is if we go and click on like phone, if we go and open up messages, if we go and click on Google Chrome, things like that. If you go and take a look at all those applications, if we go back into recents, you should be able to see all those apps that we have right here, which is really, really cool. So you can now swipe between whatever apps you want to, and that's kind of it. Now, one other thing I want to go and show you is the settings application. If you're ever looking for a setting or if you're ever trying to figure out something within your phone, you can always make your way over to your settings app and you can always click on search and you can always search within the application within settings. So if you're searching for Bluetooth or anything, you can always go and search up Bluetooth just like this and you should be able to find the specific application or notification or setting, whatever, and you should be able to find it here and you can modify those settings as you get into it. Now, furthermore, going through our settings for one second, you should be able to see a ton of things within this application. So starting up at the top, you have a Samsung account that'll be here under connections or connected devices. Those are just basically connected, you know, connections that you can kind of modify. Modes and routines, these are basically more like, you know, Samsung related things within your phone. Sounds and vibration, if you want to change your ringtone or your system sounds, go and modify that here. Under notifications, you can also click here and modify your notification settings as well, which is really awesome. Under display, if you want to change your phone under light mode or dark mode, you can modify that here. 
Also, if you want to change your adaptive brightness or extra brightness, you can do that here. Some motion smoothness. If you want adaptive, which I would recommend, that'll go ahead and modify here too, which is basically your 120 hertz. But if you want to go ahead and change your actual, you know, display mode at the bottom from being a nav bar button to an actual navigation bar, you can always click on navigation bar here. And if you prefer swipe gestures, you can get those swipe gestures, which is really cool. So you can swipe up, you can basically go on from there. And I actually prefer gestures quite a bit. So if you want to go and swipe up and kind of go in between apps, you can do that there. So that's done within display. Wallpaper and style, themes, home screen, lock screen, those things are pretty obvious. I think most of us kind of know how to modify those. Security, I mean, even all of these settings are pretty much the same. So what I would recommend doing is kind of going through your Samsung phone and really understanding this device and going through each individual setting here. There's really not a crazy amount that, you know, don't need a self-explanation. They are very much very self-explanatory. But the very first thing I'd recommend doing as soon as you buy a Samsung phone is to scroll all the way down in your settings and click on software update. And this is probably going to be the most important thing I would recommend any person to do out there. And what this allows you to do is when you actually download and install this update, it's going to allow you to actually find any new updates that are available for your phone. Now, if there's none available, then it really doesn't matter. But if there is an update available, I would recommend downloading and installing that update because that is going to be the most important thing you can do. If there's any bug fixes, if there's any improvements like that, actually going through and updating your phone is a very important thing that I'd recommend doing. So just go through, update your phone, and that is a very cool thing you can do. Now, when you're ready, you can swipe up, we can go back home, and that's pretty much all you're going to have to do. So that is a quick little breakdown on exactly how to use your Samsung Galaxy S23. Now it's, again, it's kind of like easier said than done. You're going to have to figure out how to use this phone for the most part, but it's a pretty basic process and you made a right choice. You know, this is a great phone and hopefully you enjoy using it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.